Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Um, oh, I was just sitting here listening to some praise and worship music on my YouTube, cleaning my house and stuff. And, you know, I was going through these, uh, sat down to watch this rapture uh, dream that this lady had. And I just felt this urgency come over me. Um, Jesus is coming. And he, and he is coming soon. Uh, I was sitting there just doing my dishes. And I remember back when I was like 15, 16, and I was in the youth groups and church and stuff. Now, church, the church was different back then. It was, you know, there, homosexuality wasn't allowed in the churches. And for the most part, they, the ministers and the, the pastors and preachers, they you know, kept their hands clean. And if they didn't keep their hands clean, you know, the, the, uh, church would call them out. They would, they would ask them to step down and stuff, but you very rarely seen that. But it's not like that anymore. But I remember, um, man, the youth were so on fire back then. Uh, there wasn't all this perversion in the schools and, you know, prayer was still in the schools and, uh, youths were just, oh yeah, hey, you know, we're having church. It's, you know, youth night, come on, you know, and then the other kids at school would say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. You know, we do this and that and we go on mission trips and Jesus is so awesome. And, and I remember, uh, one of the youth pastors would say, you guys are generation X. Your generation will not pass away you will see the coming of the Lord. And that's what the message they were preaching during those days, like 95, 94, 96, 97. Those were the, the uh, years that it's just, it seemed like the youth was just on fire. And I remember they had this, this saying, it was called, uh, acquire the fire. And you took, a, a mission trip. You could sign up for mission trips over to Africa and Mexico and in these different places, and um, all my friends were going. Of course, I we didn't, I didn't have any money to go, but um, all my all my friends that had money to go, they were able to go. But everybody was just so on fire, you know. And and they'd be like, "Oh, we got our driver's license now. We can drive to youth group," you know. <laughs> and so we'd all lay down on the back of the truck because we just run around and pick up all of our friends, you know, and just be come on. It was just something cool to do because we we didn't have phones back then. Rarely we had computers and it was like America online. You had to pay by minute. So, you know, the parents would be like, get off there. You have 10 minutes. It was just completely different. Um, but the urgency is real. It, it Jesus is coming. <clears throat> uh, the things that are going on in these churches right now. The, the wheats and the tares are being divided. Like the uh, judgment is like happening or, you know, the way God's system set up and Satan's system is set up, we, we are automatically being divided. And this includes the church, these church buildings. Um, I prayed. I said, Lord, do you want me to go back to church? You know, I passed so many. They, they seem so awesome. I mean, this one, look at how big it is. And, oh, look, they're out there having like an Easter egg hunt. They have something going on every week. You know, it must be really blessed and stuff. And, 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 and I heard the Lord say, no, no. I know I'm going to get some scoffers and coffers. Oh, but my pastor's so great. No, oh, my, my church family and all that. That's wonderful, but in this day and age, you don't know what that pastor's doing behind closed doors. You don't know what's going on. The Lord says, no man will lead you to salvation, but me. And in these urgent last minutes, it's like we just can't take that chance. I just, I just feel it pressed upon my heart. And like these prophets, you know, back and then, oh, we don't need apostles or prophets. You know, we, we don't need that. Well, I'm telling you, friends, they're here. They've been called out. They've been called to their post. Uh, 
They're going into these churches and they're saying, look, your hands are not clean. And, and the, the church families and the pastors are ganging up on them, telling them to get out. God's sending them. I mean, they could have been going there for, for all their lives. And God's telling them, hey, tell this pastor his hands aren't clean. He's going home and having a shot of this. Or he's going home and, you know, he's doing the cannabis oil. Or he's going home and he's looking at things on the computer he shouldn't be looking at. Or he's going home and look at what his kids are doing. His house isn't even order. And now he's trying to uh, lead a house under my name. This uh, gay person, homosexual is coming in and they're saying, oh, it's okay. Just believe on the Lord. You'll be saved. He'll forgive you. No. Or you guys uh, have been living in sin for like, you know, two or three years. They, he, they don't say anything to them. They're watering down God's word. They are watering it down. I had a vision of a blood drop with a water drop on the top. And it, it watered down the blood. And the Lord said, they are watering me down. They're watering my, my word down. Come out. Come out of her. And that's what he's saying. No one can lead you into the truth. No man can stand in between and mediate for you. Only Jesus can lead you into all truths and, and forgive you. And, ah, uh, friends, it's just terrible right now. It, that's why the God is coming, because there's nothing righteous left. It's like in the days of Noah. He told Noah, and Noah's like, really? Okay, I believe you, Lord. Or Lot, well, Lord, is there not just one righteous person left? This is what it's coming down to. This is what it's coming down to. And, and Jesus is coming. I'm telling you, these prophets, they're being separated. They're being pulled from the church. They're being set aside. And they're going in these churches and they're saying, your hands aren't clean. And they're not believing them. And I'll tell you what, there's so many churches. There's churches in Detroit. They're losing their churches. The deacons are getting struck down with cancer because these prophets are coming in trying to tell them, repent. Turn away from your wicked ways. And they're struck down with diseases and cancer. And they're dying because they won't listen. It's happening all over the country. It's, it's just so urgent right now. And I know you're sitting there thinking, oh, but, you know, uh, my pastor, he's been leading me. And he's just so great. Don't idolize your pastor. Don't idolize him. You don't know him. No, nobody knows another person except for God. I don't care how long you've known that person. You don't know what he does in his bedroom. You don't know what he does when no one's looking or who, it, what she does when no one's looking. It's just not the same as it was back then. His word's been watered down. The churches are corrupt. People, I feel bad for people that don't know what's what's going on, what God is doing right now in this world. It is an urgency. And when he comes back, you won't be taken. These, these prophets and apostles and, and saints are being set aside and they're coming out of the churches. I'm telling you, they're coming out by the thousands. God is telling them, come out. It's, it's bad. He's moving you out of those areas and, 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 and just directly to the Bible, directly to his word, directly to him. I mean, I could tell you, you know, I, I was in the United Pentecostal. It's the first time I've ever felt the Holy Spirit so strong was a, was a Pentecostal church. But guess what? You can't wear pants because of one scripture in the Bible that says men should not look like women and women should look like, not look like men. So that means you, you can't wear pants. No, that's a tradition of men. They're talking about homos. That scripture is talking about homosexuals. We need to, you know, what the, the Bible says, my people die for lack of knowledge. They make up all, they put all these traditions of men inside of these churches. They're just, they're, they're buildings of wickedness now. It's not like how it was. So I encourage all of you, and I know I was led to make this video. I encourage all of you to pray and see what God wants you to do, because I'm telling you, he's coming. We all need to repent and turn away. 
<clears throat> Don't go back to that sin. It's like a dog that goes back to its own vomit is what it is. Repent, be baptized in Jesus name, Acts 2:38, for the remissions of your sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all things truthful, all things righteous, all things uh, lead you and guide you into grace and mercy and love and forgiveness. And uh, he will tell you what to do in those days, in these last days. That's what it says. The urgency is real. Jesus is coming. I just love y'all. I pray for us all in Jesus name. Amen.